Welcome to Kingdom Community South Africa. This is the youth program presented by the Kingdom Youth. In a world influenced by status, fame, charm and deception, we the youth of the Kingdom of God are living amidst a world culture. There may come a time where we conform to standards of the world, backslide and maybe even compromise our salvation in this desolate and vain environment. Being exposed to this negative environment is not a problem. We are to expect adversity, trials and tribulations. However, as children of God, if we are not influencing the kingdom of God in this environment, that is the problem. Join us as we learn and discover our mandate and authority as children of God to influence the kingdom of God in our world today. Wow, good evening, um, kingdom community family, young people. Um, it's a blessing to be on your platform tonight. Uh, my name is Reverend Vuyo Mahambi, and I uh, had the privilege to speak at the recent, uh, recent event that you had and you hosted, which was uh, the Youth Conference on June 16. It was truly a blessing. For those of you who could not make it, um, you really missed out, but I'm sure that the recordings have been made available for you to catch up with what was shared and what was taught during, those, uh, during that day. Um, Tonight and this evening, I'm going to be touching just briefly on uh, the subject of leadership and authentic leadership, especially amongst young people. Um, if I had the opportunity to give it even a title, I would have called it the Holy Spirit School of Leadership or uh, the art of, uh, because of what I'm driven by, the art of student leadership. And that is really what, what my drive is about, the student's uh, lifestyles, life patterns, belief system, convictions, and, 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 and all that goes along with uh, your life as a student. But whoever you are, young person, whatever the case may be, um, it's also for you. The first part I want to start with in terms of leadership is that it's not exclusive to a few people. Um, leadership is something that is open to anybody and everyone. So every single one of you that's watching me right now has the potential to be a leader. Um, um, let me start here. The, the word leadership itself, if you break it down into two parts, you will see that the first part of the word leadership is the word lead. Now, that word is sometimes uh, cross-used. Uh, for example, somebody may say that she is uh, leading a quiet life in the countryside or that she is leading a, a very disturbing life. And they are contrasting the two words together, leading and living. Um, so what this essentially would mean is that leading is living and living is leading. So those two actually go together. So um, it's difficult to separate the way you live from the way you lead. Uh, and that is the benchmark that I want to start. The second part I'll introduce very shortly. Um, uh, I have a short time. So the first thing I want you to know is that leading is living and living is leading. And you cannot separate the two. Um, you can pretend uh, to lead and live differently, but it will find you out. The reason why we have a lot of corruption today is that leaders who lead differently from the way they live. So sometimes, sometimes come, something comes out on the open and the people find that they were not really who they said they were because you can't separate the two. How you live will eventually affect how you lead and how you lead will eventually affect how you live. So to authentically affect your leadership, you would have authentically to affect the way you live. So basically, living or living is leading and leading is living. You can't have the two separate from the other. Your lifestyle will eventually affect the way you live. Uh, and so uh, one of the things that one has to work on is on yourself. Your lifestyle comes as a result of who you are. And that takes us back to our authentic identity in Christ and who he has made us to be. So that's the first thing. The second part about leadership, and here I want to read a few scripture, and this is the one I want to really focus on more, uh, which will eventually also uh, flow in, into what I shared earlier, that my belief and my conviction about leadership is that the art of leadership is essentially the art of following. The ability to follow develops you in a, a very good leader. Um, I would put it this way, um, to lead, you must first be led. To lead, 
you must first be led. Uh, so many times as young people, we are in a rush to lead when we have not had enough time to be led because it's in the season of being led that you are actually being brought up as to how to lead. The second thing is that a leader that does not follow is not a good leader to follow. I'll say it again. A leader that does not follow is not a good leader to follow. Um, Jesus had 12 followers that virtually changed the world. And these 12 followers were followers but were also leaders in their own right. In fact, biblical history shows us how individually they impacted different parts of the world with the gospel. So they were leaders, um, but they were also followers. And as a leader, um, you should never resign from the place and the position of following. Everybody must uh, be a follower. Now, I want to introduce a person uh, that apart from who else to follow or who do you follow, who you choose to follow, there are mentorships, uh, there are pastors, there are people who are over us and all that that needs to be followed. But the ultimate person that must be followed must be the Holy Spirit. You should be a person that can be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, in Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our inf infirmities or weaknesses, for we do not know what we ought to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Now, this particular scripture talks, and I want to emphasize what we do not know. There's a part in natural leadership that you will run or you are limited by your knowledge, you are limited by your experience, you are limited by what you know. That is where the Holy Spirit actually comes in because the Holy Spirit is not limited in knowledge. And therefore, if you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are led by somebody who is not limited to what you know. And that is why in this scripture says that, for we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Holy Spirit, He knows what we ought to pray for. And it's not just limited to praying. I want to challenge you that it is limited to any area in which you may find yourself limited in knowledge. Now, leadership is decision-based. One of the cracks of leadership is the ability to take decisions. And the foundation of taking good decisions is the knowledge that you occupy or possess to take the specific decision. And the Holy Spirit is in abundance of knowledge. So if you are led by the Spirit, the Bible says in Romans that they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So even just to be a child of God, you must find yourself in a position to be led. Um, if you take away uh, the blessing of being led, you are going to be like a rebellious person. Lucifer decided that on one day that he is tired of being led and he's going to rise up to the throne of God and overtake God so that he must be the leader. But he was blessed all along as somebody who was following, and yet he was the worship leader at the time. So he was a leader, but he was also a follower. And the moment he cut himself off from following and being led, that was his end of his ministry. So as young people, we should submit ourselves uh, in positions to be led. So for example, in the church, you have leadership, you have people who have been placed over you, you are growing and developing under their leadership as you are following uh, their leadership. And eventually what makes you a leader is the fact that you have been following all along. A leader that does not follow is a dangerous leader to follow. I want you to write that down and always remember it and never find yourself in a position where you want to lead not having been led. All right. Then also, let me also read the scripture in John 14. It says there that, but the helper, John 14, 26, if you have your Bible, you can turn there. John 14, 26, but the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you in remembrance of that which I've said. He will teach you all things. So here you see that the helper whom my Father will send. So even the Holy Spirit who has come was sent. And only people who follow are in a position to be sent. So the concept of following is not a concept of being low. No, it's a concept of development. It's how the kingdom functions. That some lead, some follow. And those who lead would have to follow at the time. And those who lead and those who follow would also have to lead at the time. It's an interactional uh, a function. So none should do without the other part. Now, the blessing of being led by the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is omniscient and omnipotent. And these are the two aspects I want to emphasize on. The leadership of the Holy Spirit is omniscient and is omnipotent. Omniscience is the all-knowing. Omnipotent is the all 
powerful. So these are two aspects. So when you are being led by the Holy Spirit in any area of your life, whether it's your personal aspect of your life, whether it's somebody you need to marry, whether it's a choice you have to make between what to study, whether it's where to go, where to live, whether it's what job to take, whether it, whatever decision, wherever decision it matters, the Holy Spirit has a stake in that and wants to partner with you in that. But for that to happen, you must submit yourself to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The one person that has not been portrayed as a leader um, in, in the Christendom is the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the one person that we should learn leadership from is the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that he, the helper, must come. Uh, if I don't go, he will not come. In other words, when Jesus was on earth, he was leading the 12. He went to Peter, he went to Matthew, he went to Luke, he went to all of the 12, and they followed him. And one of the things he told Peter is that, follow me and I will make you. So Peter became who he became. Uh, Simon is the name, of course, we know in the Greek, uh, uh, the Rick, uh, Rick, which is something weak. And then Peter is the rock. So from Peter, the Rick, to Peter, the rock, took the leadership of Jesus and the following of Peter. So for you to get from one place of significance to your authentic self, one place of, of insignificance to your authentic self and your significant place, there has to be a following. There has to be a place where you are being led. Uh, Peter on Pentecost stood up with the 12 and spoke boldly. But the same Peter, when sat down with a young girl around the fire and was accused of knowing Jesus, right out denied him fully. And the difference between that Peter and the Peter of Pentecost is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's leading. So the Holy Spirit as a leader in your life is very important. In fact, you will learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And as a result of learning how to be led by the Holy Spirit, you are essentially learning how to lead yourself. Amen. Another scripture I want to just bring to attention here is um, Matthew 4 verse 1. Matthew 4 verse 1, which says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So even Jesus, when he came on, on the scene, also yielded and gave himself up to be led. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into a season of praying and fasting and to be tempted by the enemy. Another occasion where Jesus was led was when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, where John the Baptist even refused that, look, I'm not even worthy to tie the shoelaces of your shoe. Um, um, but Jesus said that, let it be so now so that we may fulfill all righteousness. So like in Romans again, let me just read it again. I think I skipped it eventually, essentially, but Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says that, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. All who are led. So I, I, I'm trying to push this notion that the Holy Spirit is the person who will train us how to be leaders by showing us how to be led. And we learn how to be led by following him. Um, in, Mark, in Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 1, says that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. So even Jesus himself submitted himself to be led. Uh, and that is how Jesus accomplished most of the things he did while he was on the earth. And if we want to accomplish something close to what Jesus did, because he said that the works that I do, that shall you do, and more even... And the person that will make that possible is the Holy Spirit. So if there's any person that must uh, formulate our concept of leadership, it should be the Holy Spirit. And we should start learning, studying his personality, his character, the way he thinks, the mind of the Spirit. What is he all about? So that we can learn these two things, leading and being led. Those two should never be separated. Um, we learn about uh, uh, Pharaoh, who had a, a, an economic problem at the time, um, in Genesis, listen to what Pharaoh says. Genesis 41 verse 38 says, this, And Pharaoh said to his servant, Can we find a man like this in whom the Spirit of God is? Now, Joseph came to solve an economic crisis at that time that Pharaoh had no idea with all his magicians, with all the economic specialists and all that, how they would solve it. But a man led by the Spirit, filled by the Spirit of God, could come in, and solve that problem. And that actually made uh, Joseph prime minister as a foreigner even in, in the land of Egypt. Uh, and that just shows the impact the Holy Spirit can have in your life as a student 
as a husband, as a wife, as a parent, as a child, whatever you are, because in every area there's an opportunity to lead and there's an opportunity to follow. And so I want to encourage us that the Holy Spirit must receive that attention to draw the necessary knowledge that we need from him. Another person that comes to mind in terms of being led is the person Daniel. Daniel chapter 5 verse 11, it says, and this was the remark Nebuchadnezzar made about him. There is a man in your kingdom, or some of the advisors to Nebuchadnezzar says to them, there's a man in your kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods is. In the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom like wisdom of the gods were found in him. This is the description that they are giving to uh, Daniel's um, level of understanding and just his, his mental state. That was, it was compared to that of the gods. And I will show you what, what the reason was found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, here uh, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians, uh, uh, enchanters, uh, Chaldeans, and astrologers. He made him chief. So by the Spirit of God and by the Holy Spirit, he was placed in a chiefly position. You see, when you are led by the Holy Spirit, you can never stay on the same level. You are, you are being built and prepared for the next level constantly, the next level, and the next level, and the next level. So it is important that we bring the Holy Spirit into the frame of what it means to be a leader. And I am saying and I'm making the statement that for you to lead effectively, you must be an effective follower. You cannot separate the two. Following has always been downplayed as something less or something degrading. It's not. If Jesus was able to take a position as a follower to the Holy Spirit and being led into the wilderness, and all the guys, even Paul the Apostle was a follower of Jesus. Uh, uh, so leadership is not just about being in the forefront or leading or the title or the position. It's the function. The function of, of being led and the function of leading. And I'm connecting the two and I'm saying that the best way to lead is to be, is to be led. The best way to lead is to follow. The promise that Jesus made, Peter says, come follow me, I will make you. So it was in his following that Peter was being shaped for his spiritual destiny. And each and every one of you have a destiny that God has assigned you for. The, the humanity sits with a problem that only you have the solution to. And the only way you'll be able to unlock that solution from within you is by leading, the leading of the Holy Spirit. As I come to a close um, on this subject of, of authentic leadership and what it means to, to lead and all that, I want to show you just something in Isaiah chapter 11 uh, where it gives the different ways. And this is basically the seven different ways Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. And, and they say that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And then it gives a different spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of might, the spirit of uh, uh, the fear of the Lord, you know. And these were the aspects by which Jesus was being led. Now, wisdom is something that must, we must be led by understanding of things, knowledge of things, and it all called the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. Maybe at a different opportunity, I will share more on these different uh, points as to how Jesus was led through each one of these. The spirit of wisdom, how was he led, and how can you be led by the spirit of wisdom, which is the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. How can you be led by the spirit of knowledge, uh, which is the Spirit of God Himself, which is the Holy Spirit. How can you be led by the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is actually, by the way, my favorite. But in the closing or the latter part of the same Isaiah 11, listen to what it says. It says that, and He, that's Jesus, shall not lead or judge by the sight of His eye, nor the hearing of His ear. The sight of His eye, nor the hearing of His ear. To judge just means to lead. Judge just makes decision. And the core of leadership is decision-making. Now, he says that, or the scripture says about him, is that he shall not lead by the sight of his eye, nor the hearing of his ear. Now, you and I would agree that we lead by what we see and by what we hear. But this dimension of leadership takes away the eye and takes away the natural ear and leaves you to the Spirit of God. And I want us to promote and to move to a place where we are led by the Spirit of God. That doesn't mean that what we see, we just 
play aside with it, but the dominant form of decision making will no longer just be limited by what we see or hear, but it will rather be by the Spirit of God and by the leading of the Spirit of God. That should be the ultimate of how we make decisions, even based on, even if you've seen something and if you've heard something, the ultimate decision and the ultimate clarity of either what you've seen or heard will be by the Holy Spirit. And that is the beautiful summary of what they say about Jesus, that it will not be by sight or hearing of his ears. And the Bible tells us, not by might, by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, uh, 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 saith the Lord. So I want to encourage as a young person, begin your personal training right now as to being led by the Spirit of God, which will help you uh, beyond just what we see and hear. That just means that beyond what is natural, and we can't base decisions of life only on what we see and what we hear. Because the problem is, what about what we can't see and what we can't hear? And that is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because it's all-knowing, omniscient, and uh, he's able to bring us into a place of not necessarily knowing, having to know uh, on things that we have not seen. But he can help us lead our lives beyond some of them. Because sometimes you sit with the decision you have to make and you are limited in understanding, limited in knowledge, limited in wisdom, limited in counsel, all these things. But the Holy Spirit comes in to break that limitation and brings you into a place where he will expose you to his counsel, his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. And like I say, my favorite, the fear of the Lord. Because that one makes you think about God before deciding. Every time it's like, what, what would God say? What would God think? What, what would God's op, uh, viewpoint will be? Instead of taking the viewpoint of just one political leader or the viewpoint of one lecturer or the viewpoint of whatever, the ultimate viewpoint that you will stand for is the viewpoint of God. Hallelujah. And, and that is the kind of leadership I want to uh, uh, encourage you to try and trace, do your own study, go and read up, see how that will impact you. The Holy Spirit's leading has impacted many nations across the world, even in biblical days, uh, people like Samson, Gideon, they were all impacted by the leadership of the Holy Spirit and they were able to change the destinies of their people. And you are the next person to change the destiny of your family, to change the destiny of your community, to change the destiny of your town, your city, or hopefully, in the few years to come, you'll be one of the leading nation changers on the continent of Africa. And I prophesy over your life that you, by the leading of the Spirit, and as a follower of the Holy Spirit, are going to do dynamic and impossible things. So the Bible says that that which is impossible with men is possible with God. And if you are led by the Spirit of God, the impossible will become possible. God bless you. And let us just close in prayer. Maybe you're watching, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you have not given your heart to the Lord, or you want to make right with Him, or you feel a bit separated. Maybe you feel that you've not had your quiet time, you feel that you've not come to church for such a long time. I want to invite you that this coming Sunday, make it a point to come and fellowship, come and sit at the feet of your pastor, because that is ultimately what it means to be led, is that there's somebody who you submit yourself to, to lead, and especially in matters of, of spiritual things. And this Sunday, I want to invite you, but you are at home right now watching. I want to pray with you, and I want you to say this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, this evening, I receive your gift of salvation. I surrender my heart and my life to you. I give my life back to you. Jesus, thank you for salvation and thank you for your precious blood. I receive you into my heart. I commit my life to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you've prayed a very important prayer of faith. And that faith must be grown. And I want you to come and submit yourself to your pastor. Tell him that you watched a program or one of the youth events that you've watched. And you prayed this prayer and you want to know what's next. And your pastor, your leaders here will then teach you and show you how to grow in this newfound uh, salvation that you have as a gift. Thank you very much, and God bless you. See you next time, and see you soon. And see you this Sunday. Amen.